Okay, here we go. First derivative test. Um, I want you guys to all be really, really good at this because you're going to see this a whole lot on the AP test. Um, find the extreme, extreme of values. That's all the maxes and mins um, on this interval. So, uh, what do we do? Um, well, extreme values are going to come in one of three things on the interval from negative 3 to 5 um, they're going to come at either the endpoints or places where the derivative is 0 or if it's not a nice graph oops if I erase that they might come at a place where the derivative is undefined Okay. So that's why we want to find where's the derivative 0 or undefined. And then we also want to check our endpoints. So those are the only places where we're going to have maxes or minimums. Okay, So we want to check um, derivative equal to 0, undefined, and then check the endpoints. These are our those are our possible um, extreme values. OK, so probably going to use this space over here so I'm going to erase this and then we will go from there okay so here we go um, let's find the critical points first so f prime of x we'll try to do this as neat as possible you know I'm going to make this not quite as thick and see so that'll make it a little bit easier here okay extreme values f of x or I should say f prime is 3x squared minus 12. Uh, gosh, I tell you guys all the time in class I don't do math at home, and I'm doing math at home. Go figure. Um, but this is for you, so there you have it. Um, so there's a derivative. I'm going to set it equal to 0. Um, and I want to solve this. So I get 3x equals x squared equals 12. Divide by 3, I get x squared equals 4. Take the square root of both sides. Now remember, when I take the square root of both sides, this is going to be a plus or minus 2 um, situation because I'm taking the square root of x squared, which is actually the absolute value of um, 2, which is plus or minus 2. Whenever you take the square root of something squared, you always could get plus or minus as your answer because 2 squared is 4, but also negative 2 squared. So these are my critical values. When the derivative is 0, notice the derivative is nowhere undefined. So I'm going to, on my number line, I'm going to come over here and go negative 2 and 2. And I want to make sure that I label this as to what I'm doing. A lot of you guys tended to put plus and minus without putting what the derivative is, and it's not really clear. Well, does that mean f, f prime, f double prime, and things like that? So let's look at numbers to the left. To the left of negative 2, like negative 3, if I plug in negative 3 in here, that's going to make that positive. Um, if I plug in a number between here, like 0, that's going to make that negative. And to the right, it's going to be positive. Okay, so that makes this a, this is decreasing. Oops, I'm sorry increasing, decreasing, increasing, so it's going to make this a max and a minimum. I'm just writing this down. This does. This is just my work, showing my work, what I'm doing here. And so I'm going to say this. Since um, f prime, oops, f prime changes from a positive to negative at x equals negative 2 comma the point negative 2 comma and then I got to figure out what that is 11 is a local um, max I'm gonna come back and maybe change one of these to absolute min or max once I check the endpoints since oops we'll come down here since 
f prime changes from negative to positive at x equal 2. The point 2, if I plug 2 in there, I get negative 21. And you can do that work on the side. Um, 2 negative 21 is a local min. Okay, so I've got these two extrema for my critical points. But then I do need to check the endpoints. Okay, what is f of negative 3? f of negative 3 is 4, and f of 5 is 60. Okay, so what can I say about these points here? Okay, um, well, I know that, look at the y, now, now I can just look at the y values here. This is the, let's look at the minimums here. Um, it starts at negative 3. It, to the left, it's negative when x is negative 3, the y value is 4. And then it goes to 11. So it's going to go up to 11. So what does that make 4? Makes 4 a local min. It, it shoots up to 11, which is a max. And then it, as x goes along to 2, it goes down to negative 21 and then it goes over to 5 and it goes up to 60. Now 60 is the highest it is so this is the absolute max. And what's the what's the farthest down it goes? It's going to be at negative 21 so I'm going to come back here and say this is an is an the oops absolute minimum because that is lower than the um, 4 right here, right? So if you want to look at the graph here, just to give you an idea, again, you don't have to draw the graph, but it's helpful to see. Negative 3, negative 2, 2, and 5. At negative 2, I'm up here at 11, and I know I've got a max. At 2, I'm down here at negative 21, and I've got a min. And at 3, I'm here at 4. And at 5, I'm way up here at 60. So I know that graph's got to do something like this, right? So I've got my local min, local max, absolute min, absolute max. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, you don't have to draw the graph, although it certainly helps. Oops. Um, and then you're good to go. But you do have to have this in here. This is absolutely helpful and I would say I wouldn't do the problem without doing a table like that. Um, if, you do, if you miss one of the critical points then you miss a lot of things down here and you have to check the endpoints when there's endpoints. Okay, you're set. There you go.